And coming up on Impact Minds, hundreds of years after the abolition of the slave trade, why are so many people still thought to be living in modern day slavery? That's all coming up here on Impact. Hello, this month marks 400 years since the first African slaves in England's North American colonies arrived in Virginia. It was an event that would eventually become the African slave trade route to North America. Some 13 million were trafficked along it. The official slave route was eventually abolished, of course, but today it's estimated there are three times as many people in modern day slavery, more than at any time in history. In fact, it's thought that uh, more than 40 million people globally are caught up in the modern incarnation of slavery. 10 million of them are children, and it's believed that nearly 5 million people are currently being forced into sex work. So how is this so, and who are the modern-day slaves? I'm joined uh, in the studio here by Rainer Shirazi from Anti-Slavery International and by Dr. Katerina Schwartz from, the Nottingham, uh, from Nottingham University. Also from New York, we have Chandra Wararuntu, who was a victim of human trafficking and now works with anti-human trafficking advocacy groups. Uh, thank you all very much indeed. L let's just start with that modern-day definition. How do we define slavery nowadays, Rainer? Well, the thing to remember, Tim, is that... Um, slavery isn't defined by the same methods that were defining slavery 400 years ago, up until 200 years ago, in fact. There aren't the shackles and the chains and the slave ships um, prevalent today, but there are the sort of un, um, the invisible chains that are um, being used by modern day traffickers to coerce people into situations of exploitation. There's sort of three kind of key um, parameters, if you like, that define modern, modern day um, human trafficking. Uh, the first is the sort of the act, the act of harboring or recruiting or transferring a, another individual. The second is um, the, uh, the control mechanism, so abuse, violence, threat of violence, Debt is a significant factor in terms of modern day slavery cases um, for the purpose, and the third one being the purpose of typically exploitation, for the gain of another individual or another organisation. Okay, and, and Katerina, would you agree with that definition uh, and how did it range internationally? Well, I would say there's actually a distinction to be made between what we call human trafficking and what we would call slavery per se. So human trafficking, as Reiner put it very very well, is made up of three constituent parts. The first being the act, the second being the means, the form of coercion, and the third being the purpose of exploitation. But it doesn't actually require that exploitation to take place in order to have a case of trafficking. Whereas if we're talking about the exploitation itself, if we're talking about slavery, servitude, debt bondage, forced or compulsory labor, forced sexual exploitation, then we're talking about something that can manifest with or without the two other elements in legal terms. Um, so really what we're talking about when we think about slavery is a relationship of control between two people or between more than two people and the treating of people as if they were property. And that's the real connection between modern day slavery and historical enslavement as we typically think of it, um, is that relationship of control and, and treating people as if they okay. were things. We'll, we'll come on to the exploitation and that control in, in a moment. It's just to hear from Chandra though. Chandra, what was, what was, you, what was your story? How, how did you end up in, in, in New York? So uh, it was 1998 when political turbulence and religious persecution happened in my country, Indonesia. Uh, I lost my job as uh, assistant general manager of International Bank, which uh, I was financial analyst and a financial uh, money market trader. So uh, I lost my job and I thought going to America is the best because the power of US dollar at that time and I knew exactly that US dollar is the control of global economic and global politics. So, so, who, who, so it was who, American who, dream. Who, who, who took you there? How did you get there and what happened when you got there? So interested, it was uh, an advertisement by uh, employment and travel agent and I paid 3,000 US dollars for the job 
and they promised to put me in the hotel as a waitress with the promise 5,000 US dollar a month. So I got my visa and I went to, uh, to JFK and someone got me. Actually, I didn't go to Chicago. Uh, I was kidnapped and I was forced into sex industry, which is uh, like, uh, it was an organized crime. It was included and, and your, and five. Your, and your passport was taken away from you uh, and, and you, were, you, were, you were held prisoner, were you? Yeah, it was gunpoint, hunting knife, baseball bat always haunted me. And beside the passport and my belonging taken, uh, they asked me to pay three third, I'm so sorry, 30,000 US dollar for my freedom. Okay, all right. And, so uh, buy. Okay, I, and I want to hear in a moment just about how you managed to break free from that. But, but Reiner, is that, a, is that a typical case? I mean, I'm just looking at the figures here now. Uh, women and children, I think, make up 71% uh, of modern day slaves. And is that largely the, the, the sex industry? Well, human trafficking, modern slavery is, is typified by a, a whole range of different activities. So sexual exploitation is the sort of experience that children has experienced, but also forced labour in a whole range of industries in the UK, slavery, slavery and, modern and human trafficking affects every country in the world, it's worth saying that. Um, um, forced marriage was recently recognised as a form of modern slavery. So there are a whole range of different activities that are, as, as Katarina said, it, it fundamentally exploitative in their nature. Now, um, the thing to, be, um, to, to consider when with, we consider how modern slavery actually happens is um, the interplay between three things. One of them is uh, where the rule of law doesn't protect vulnerable people. The other is poverty or desperation. So, you know, someone losing a job, a shock, quite often after um, significant um, shocks such as earthquakes and floods and so on, people become more vulnerable. Um, but also where discrimination is rife. And so um, in hostile environments where there's a, a, a poor, an encouraged poor relationship between uh, people of a, a particular country and immigrants who are com new immigrants who are coming in, um, or where caste discrimination is considerable yeah. in many parts of the world, when those three things come together, modern slavery flourishes yeah, in situations actually, you know, like this one, one occur. reports from disaster zones and you see that the people preying on these, uh, the, these communities and children. Uh, Catherine, I want to come to you in a moment just on the, on the legislation and, and how it changes a, a around the world. But let's just uh, pick up on some of the tweets that have been coming in. Uh, let's just look at, uh, this is from Chala Prince in Florida. There is a vast disrespect of culture and humanity. This attitude of calling other humans as subhuman uh, and to be taken advantage of uh, due to capitalistic exploitation must be stopped. Uh, Rafael says in Brazil, the current government is trying to extinguish the non-slavery policy. We're going back to the 1800s. Uh, we need international attention. Just one more before coming back to you, uh, Katerina. Uh, Betty in Barbados says slavery was an economic expediency. Modern day slavery remains uh, the same. Profiteering from trading in human beings, particularly children and females, is so diabolical and well organized that a solution seems almost impossible. Who are the agencies battling this scourge, which brings us neatly to you, Catalina, in terms of how different governments approach this, because this is an international trade, isn't it? Absolutely. And as Reiner said, it does occur in every country in the world. There is no country which is entirely free from slavery and exploitation within its own borders, as well as in the supply chains of products coming in or leaving the country. Um, but in terms of global legislation, I want to start by saying that a really common refrain, a common thing that people say in the anti-slavery space is that slavery is illegal everywhere, but it still happens despite the fact that it's illegal. But research that we've been doing in the Rights Lab mapping uh, domestic legislation all around the world and all the countries reveals this not to be quite as true as we think it is. So I've been working with Jean Alain, who's now at Monash University, to map this legislation and, and to reveal the fact that in many, many of the world's countries, there is in fact no criminal offence relating to slavery or servitude that, that, or forced labour. from Brazil, I mean, what is happening in Brazil? So this is closely tied into the political situation in a lot of countries, and it's not just Brazil, in fact. Countries that have previously been very committed to or made positive steps towards effective governance of slavery are rolling back as governments change and governments become, you know, more right aggressive or repressive yep. or yep. populist, and, and that has a really 
real world impact on people's human rights and on people on the responses governments have to slavery. Yeah, Chandra, I mean, did you feel you were a, a slave or did you just think you were being criminally kidnapped? And, and, and how did you break free? OK, I think at that time, uh, as you know a young woman i didn't know what was human trafficking so i was thinking it is a crime that i was kidnapped uh, and then the fact after i escaped by jumping out the second floor bathroom window and then i called another another number that given by the bottom in the brothel actually another trafficker so i was hit traffic again by uh, the same enterprise uh, i escaped again uh, you know, I I knew how to do martial art. I knew my trafficker didn't have a gun, so I went to law enforcement and they didn't help me. So I was homeless. So it how the way I escaped from my situation and the fact survival is difficult and potentially I was prey to be exploited, exploited, and exploited again. Okay, um, uh, and Brian, when, when we look at the, the sort of areas of uh, exploitation, slavery, uh, children, people working in agriculture, people working in intensive fishing, uh, farming, construction, I mean, it, it's everywhere. But I, I suppose some people might still challenge the use of the definition slavery. Exploitation, yes. Slavery, perhaps slightly more nuanced and complicated. I think it's very difficult to argue that you can't use that term when you hear stories like Chandra's. Oh, that, that I, is, I think it's very difficult in, in to, working in agriculture. I think it's very difficult to um, have that argument when we are in a situation where there are countries around the world, such as Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, where children and, and all citizens who are healthy enough are forced into cotton fields to pick cotton for the garments that we wear. We, we, we can't not say that that is a form of slavery, it's a form of labour exploitation. I think what's really interesting about what Chandran has just said there particularly is um, that she went to the police, she went to the authorities and they didn't know how to help her. And I think that comes back to that issue around um, sort of discrimination if, or, or you know, not, not being of a place and being considered to be of value. And that is something that fits very uh, neatly or it contrasts very much with the legal provision. So. You know, while, while a country may be um, doing a terrific amount of work in terms of tying up its legal lo loophole, loopholes, it may not always reflect in the service provision that's provided. The, uh, the police systems are not set up to identify what the signs of someone who is in slavery looks like. Um, social services may not be. Doctors, the, N the NHS in this country, for example, medical services. And that's a really critical part of how the world responds to a case uh, of uh, Katarina, slavery. Katarina, I mean, there, there are international uh, views, norms, aren't there, about modern day slavery? Should the UN, should other bodies like that be doing more and trying to get this enforced? So they are doing a lot. It's certainly not true to say that international organisations aren't doing a lot in this space. And you can see a lot of movement in UN organisations in different branches of the UN. The UN ODC, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime, deals with human trafficking specifically. The International Labour Organization will deal with forced and compulsory labour. The Human Rights Committee, there are a whole slew of international organisations as well as regional organisations that are really trying to tackle this global problem. And the sustainable development goals articulated by the United Nations include modern slavery, forced labour and child labour as one of the targets um, for 2030. Okay, we're running out of time. Shandra, I just want to end with you really. I mean, what happened to the people who trafficked you? Do you, do you know? Were they, were they caught? Have they been, have they been punished? And, and do you know that there are a lot of other women who are suffering what you're suffering still today now in, in America? Yes. So after I escaped, I didn't give up. Uh, I worked with law enforcement. We were able to break through the brothel and rescue many girls and arrest the traffickers. But the problem is there is no justice on sex bias side. It was an equal justice. So I testified in the court and some of my traffickers prosecuted, but some of them still on the run. Okay, all right. Well, but the desperation is there is no justice that I got 
from the people that abuse me sexually, verbally, and uh, physically. That mostly by sex buyers. Okay, well, um, Chandra, thank you very much for, um, for sharing your horrendous experiences uh, here on this deb debate about modern day slavery. Uh, Chandra, uh, there, Reiner in the studio with me, uh, and Dr. Katharina Schwartz, uh, thank you all very much uh, indeed. Keep your views coming in, uh, and uh, plenty more of that, of course, on the website. Uh, we're back in the next edition uh, with uh, all the other international news, followed by sports. See you then.